Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. September 25th, 2017. 105 here on the great WRKO. Okay, Cooner Country, let me ask you this question of the day. Are you going to boycott the Patriots? Or we have a lot of listeners from in Florida and Wisconsin and uh, in Arizona. So whatever your local team is, whether it be the Dolphins, the Cardinals, the Packers, whatever, will you boycott the Patriots or will you boycott your favorite team? If the answer is yes, text the letter A to 680-680. And i got to be honest with you, I'm a big yes now. Until they stop the protests... I am no longer watching not just the Patriots, but no football, any football. If the answer is no, Jeff, I, I love my team. <laughs> I'm a diehard fan. What can I do? Text the letter B to 680-680. As always, you can vote online at WRKO.com. Brittany, what are the poll results thus far? 89%. Yes, they will boycott. The Patriots and or the NFL, and 11% say no, they will not. Now, you were commenting off the air that this could be the, the largest number of people who've ever responded to our poll, correct? Yes, and within 10 minutes, yes. Huge numbers are, are voting on this. All right, so Brittany, a diehard, and I mean a diehard Patriots fan, is a yes on this one. Yep. So if I was Tom Brady... I would be thinking twice about my decision yesterday to have joined others to protest the national anthem and disrespect the flag. Instead, he went on this morning with on WEI's Kirk and Callahan. By the way, they have a superb show, but let that go. And Kirk Minahan asked him this question and listened to Brady's response. Roll it, Brittany. Are you watching that the same way? At least I am thinking, you know, don't you have bigger things to worry about than whether a player kneels or doesn't kneel for a national anthem? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly disagree with, you know, what he said and, 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 you know, thought it was just divisive and, and, uh, you know, like I said, it's, you know, I just want to support my teammates and I, I always say, I'm never one that says, oh, that's wrong or that's right or that's, but I do believe in what I believe in, and, and I believe in bringing people together and respect and love and trust, and, and uh, you know, those are the values that my parents instilled in me, and that's how I try to live every day. And, um, you know, I've been blessed to be in a locker room with guys from all over the United States over the course of my career. Some of my great friends are from, you know, Florida, you know, uh, Virginia, you know, New York, Montana, Colorado, Texas. I mean, I think one thing about football is it brings so many guys together, guys that you would never have the opportunity to, to be around, whether it was in college uh, and all the way into the pros. And we're all different, and we're all unique, and you know that's what makes us all so special. What does this have to do with disrespecting the flag and the anthem? I would all due respect, the guy sounds like a hippie. I mean, really? I want you know if nobody else wants to call him out, I'm gonna, I guess I'm the only one, only one that's going to have to do it. You know, and I know the liberal media loves this answer because he's calling Trump's comments divisive and wrong. And and I just got to say this, I have to say this, Brady, Tom, when in the darkest hour, when the media was, I mean, just tearing into you over Deflategate. And people wanted you to be thrown out of the league, expelled from the league. Roger Goodell was gunning for you, out to hum humiliate you, embarrass you, tear down your legacy and all of your accomplishments. Who stood by you in your hour of need? Not. Well, I want to thank you. First of all, let's start by saying, leave Tom Brady alone. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. He's a great guy. It's enough. It's enough. Again and again and again, Trump stood by you in your hour of need. And this is how you pay him back? Uh, same thing with Bob Kraft. I know they're friends and you gave him a Super Bowl ring and stuff, but during Deflategate, when the New England Patriots became almost public enemy number one in the professional sports world, especially in the NFL, with the whole country reviling them, who stood by Bob Kraft? Who stood by Brady? Who stood by the Patriots? It was Trump. 
Uh, believe me, you know, this wasn't popular down there in Florida. Believe me, they didn't love him for it in Texas or in other parts of the country. They can't stand the Patriots. Okay, but let that go. He stood by him through thick and thin. And now, when it's convenient for you, because you have to be quote unquote politically correct, because we've got people playing from every state in the country and all kinds of backgrounds, and that's even why the flag is so incredible. Because beyond a race and color and creed and gender, we are all Americans. And that's what the flag represents. That's why you don't disrespect it. Never mind those poor people, those great vets and heroes who gave their lives for our freedoms and for our way of life. You can't stand up for the flag? If you can't stand up for the flag, I'm sorry, you can't stand up for anything. I'm going to be very honest with you. You're making $20, $25 million a year. You're worth north of $200, $300 million. You got more money than you know what to do with. And when it comes to defending your friend, your buddy, who was there for you in your darkest hour and never wavered in his support for you, when it comes to defending this country and this flag, which has been so good to you, and now you're, you're, you're giving me the, the, the politically correct, the politically fashionable, the chic answer? I'm sorry. I don't, I'm sorry. I do not have respect for you. I'm sorry. I don't. And I'll tell you who I do have respect for. And mark my words, my friends. This guy is now going to become public enemy number one for liberals and the Democrats. As this thing falls out over the next couple days, this name is going to be heard more and more. And the libs and the Dems are already gunning for him. Alejandro Villanueva who to me, I think maybe is the greatest hero in professional football today. And I'll tell you why. He is an offensive lineman for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers team, led by their head coach, that uh, Black Lives Matter supporter, okay, that social justice warrior, that loser, Mike Tomlin, he instructed the Steelers, all of them, to not get out of the locker room to go on the sideline to, uh, for the national anthem. So to stay in the locker room, that's how much he wanted them to disrespect the anthem and the flag. And defying his coach, defying the culture of conformity in that locker room, defying the ownership, Alejandro Villanova walked out into the tunnel, put his right hand on his heart, his helmet underneath his left arm and stood there and sang the national anthem he has served three tours in Afghanistan he is an army ranger who is a recipient of the bronze medal and when asked why he did it he said it's because I'm an American before I am a stealer now there's something else you need to know about this man. He's a, an incredible man. Loving wife, wonderful children, a great supporter of the vets and the military. He's a real American and a real American hero. He has signed a contract, four years, $24 million. Okay? That's $6 million a year. By his own admission, in the NFL world, that's a little bit on the low end. Most of these guys make 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 15 million. When Colin Kaepernick was doing his sitting on the bench routine and then kneeling last year, Villanova came out publicly with the statement, unlike very few other players, and said, this guy, Kaepernick, is making $16 million a year to sit on the bench. That's basically a million dollars a game. Making more money than almost any other athlete could in any other country in the world. Only in America could you make this kind of money. And you're crying about racism and oppression? And then Villanova said this, what about his concern for all of the minorities that I served with, and in particular African Americans, who fought with me and are fighting and dying in Afghanistan and Iraq? 
for less than $20,000 a year. They love their country so much, they are willing to put their life on the line, maybe never come back home, or come back home without a leg or an arm, for less than $20,000 a year. That's how much they love their country. That's how much they appreciate their country. And you can't stand? And you're making $16 million a year? I make $6 million. I am so grateful to America to give me a career where I can play a game, as Villanova put it, and I get paid millions of dollars? This is the greatest country, not in the world, in the history of the world. And listen now to Mike Tomlin. This is the coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers who actually said, I didn't want Alejandro to go out and, 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 and respect and stand up for the national anthem. And in fact now, they're going to hold it against the guy. They're now going to punish the guy who actually stood up and saluted the flag and respected the national anthem. Listen now to Mike Tomlin saying, I didn't want him to do it. I didn't want him to do it. Roll it, Brittany. Mike, was it your decision not to come out for the anthem? And what was your thinking with that? No, it wasn't my decision. Um, like most teams in the National Football League, uh, we didn't ask for this. Um, this was, was placed upon us by circumstance. Um, I heard rumblings of guys talking uh, during the course of the day yesterday. My contention was um, that we will not allow politics to divide us with football players, with football team. Um, if, if many of them felt like something needed to be done, I asked those guys to discuss it. And whatever they discussed, that, you know, we have 100% participation or we do nothing. Um, they dis discussed it for an appropriate length of time. They couldn't come to an understanding. Um, so they chose to, to remove themselves from it. Uh, they were not going to be disrespectful in the anthem. Uh, so they chose not to participate. But at the same time, uh, many of them were not going to accept the words of the president. So uh, we decided to sit it out, uh, to not take the field. Um, to, to remove ourselves from it, to focus on playing football. Um, and so those were our intentions. And the was okay. He came out. He was out of the tunnel because of Like the I said, I was looking for 100% participation. We we're going to be respectful of our football team. Man, these are divisive times uh, in the United States. And it's a shame, uh, but it is. Um, but we're not politicians. Um, we're coaches and professional athletes. And um, if those of us or individuals choose to, you know, choose to uh, participate in politics in some way, I'm going to be supportive of that. Um, but when we come out of, you know, locker rooms, man, we come out of locker rooms to play football games. And to be quite honest with you, man, I didn't appreciate our football team being drugged into politics this weekend. And I'm sure that uh, that's a global perspective. Um, but, you know, we're blessed to do this for a living. And so with that blessings comes responsibility. We understand that. We understand that we're given a platform that's a unique one. Uh, many of us are called to maybe do things that we wouldn't normally do because of that platform where, where people apply pressure to us to do things because of that platform. Uh, and the bottom line is um, we chose not to play ball. Unbelievable. By staying in the locker room, you are disrespecting the flag. But more than that, you, I wanted 100% participation. Are you freaking kidding me? So you're, you're punishing the guy or you're angry with the guy, the one guy who did the right thing? who showed respect for the flag, for the country, for the anthem? Alejandro Villanova is my hero, and to me, he is the number one player in the NFL. Butch in Brockton. Go ahead, Butch. Jeff, I, I had called in earlier to uh, bring up Villanova because when I saw it this morning, I said, no, there's a hero. And I've been following the Patriots since 1961. And I'm, I'm tossed right now. I, I love my Patriots, but I love my country more. And uh, I'm going to be very hard-pressed to find uh, time to watch them next week. Butch, how come we had so few Patriots who showed the kind of courage that Villanova showed when he stood up? proudly putting his hand over his heart and respecting well, the anthem and the flag. 
Jeff, in this day and age, uh, the Patriots, uh, not the football team, but the American Patriots, are few and far between anymore. We have become so liberal, so, you know, anything goes with socialism that it's, you know, uh, I get sick when I see Granny Warren coming out on the any place and and trust me i don't know how you could even have your picture taken with her i saw a picture with you and her at some event and i said jeff you're letting me down oh no i stood up to her uh, butch you got to see the video believe me i oh she squirmed i really she squirmed trust me on this six six one seven two six six sixty eight sixty eight will you boycott the patriots and is it time to boycott the NFL? Your call's next. 617-266-6868. Are you disappointed in Brady's response? He now uh, calls out the president, criticizes Trump. Did he just stab his friend in the back? Carlos, you're up next. Go ahead, Carlos. Hey, Jeff. Carlos Hernandez running for Congress. Hernandez for Congress. Uh, US. Uh, Jeff, <laughs> look, I, I, when last week, I mean, yesterday, when uh, they started playing in England, I mean, I got so very angry. I mean, I can't believe that these guys are doing this to our nation. Villanova, uh, that, that guy's a hero. These other guys are a bunch of uh, uh, ungrateful SOBs that basically are getting paid millions of dollars to play a game and that basically we normally get ready for every weekend. Uh, to actually watch. Right now I'm having a tough time. I actually have to talk to my daughter and consider burning my birthday present from August, which basically is the Grady's T-shirt. Uh, it's unbelievable, Jeff. I mean, I, I can't believe it. Uh, and and uh, the owners and the NFLs are a bunch of cowards, and they should basically uh, – these people work for them. They control what these people do. They control everything, and, and these people basically should be told – if you do it again, you're gone. Carlos, you thank you for that call. Uh, look, to me, of all the scandals yesterday, to me the biggest scandal is what took place in London. On foreign soil, on foreign soil, you had the Ravens, their players, their coach, the Jaguars, their players, their coach, and their Pakistani billionaire owner, Saeed Khan, openly protesting the American national anthem. And then when they afterwards, did they played God Save the Queen, the British national anthem, they all stood up. In fact, they even put their hands on their heart on foreign soil. And I'm asking myself, so let me get this straight. The country that enables you to make tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars gives you opportunities that nowhere else in the world you can find. That's the anthem and the flag that you spit on. But the country that we seceded from, the country that in the War of 1812 invaded America and burned down our White House, that's the country you're standing up for. Ay ay ay, ay ay ay. Now, why isn't Roger Goodell protesting that? I'll tell you why. Because he told them to do it. He told them to do it. Roger Goodell, shame on you. Uh, is it Aletta? Did Aletta? Aletta in New Hampshire. Go ahead, Aletta. It's Alita. Alita. I'm sorry. My apologies. Alita, That's go right. ahead. Welcome. There's a simple solution. When an NFL player signs his contract, he's handed the NFL rule book. And on pages A62 and 63 of the NFL league rule book, it states the national anthem must be played prior to any FL game. And all players must be on the sideline for the national anthem. During the national anthem, players on the field and bench must stand at attention, face the flag, hold helmets in their left hand, and refrain from talking. The home team should ensure that the American flag is in good condition. It should be pointed out to players and coaches that we continue to be judged by the public in this area of respect for the flag in our country. Failure to do so and be on the field by the start of the national anthem may result in discipline such as fines, suspensions, and or forfeiture of draft choices for violations of the above, including first offenses. 
So, Roger Goodell, do your job, jerk. Alita, that is straight from the NFL rule book. Incredible. In- incredible. Incredible. Well, it's like illegal immigration. I mean, what the hell? Huh? You have to follow the rules. I have to follow the rules. But when it comes to these moonbats and liberals, they don't have to follow the rules. Is Was Trump's attack on the NFL racist? The liberals now play the race card. Trump fights back. That story, more with your calls, next. WRKO, the voice of Boston. You walk into the stadium today, and a good number of Jet players decided to take a knee and protest the national anthem. How would you feel about that? I would be embarrassed. I am dead against that. I'm a veteran. So the Marine Corps years, and yeah, I'm dead, dead against that. It would be a disgrace. It's it's unethical for them to do that. I'll still root for the Jets. I won't agree with what they do, but I'm still going to root for the Jets. I would be disappointed if they did that. I think a nonviolent protest is absolutely the way to go. 137 here on the great WRKO. Okay, fans everywhere are speaking out. Let me ask you, a wave of protests now. Players, coaches, coaches managers, even owners... Uh, protesting the national anthem, the American flag. Let me ask you, will you boycott the Patriots? Will you boycott the NFL? Josh in Framingham, you're up next. Go ahead, Josh. Hey, Jeff. During the national anthem yesterday, there were, there were thousands of people that were booing. Now, do you, do you feel that they were booing the troops or the American flag? Or, you know, what do you feel about this? I, personally, I feel like the booing was was very, very disrespectful, even more than, than taking a knee. Uh, Josh, my understanding, I wasn't at the game, but uh, my understanding was that a lot of the boos were at the players, directed at the players for kneeling during the national anthem. So if you can see a distinction between the people booing not being for the national anthem, isn't there you know, a distinction such as, you know, maybe the people that were kneeling weren't kneeling to show disrespect to the troops or to the flag. They may have been kneeling for a different reason. Well, it doesn't matter what their reasons are. They're disrespecting the flag. It, but isn't booing disrespectful? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Again, I, I keep trying to tell you. They're, I think they were booing. They weren't booing during the national anthem. The second they took the knee, they, they started booing. They yeah, were the, booing during the national anthem. You could hear it on they, the TV broadcast. Well, they so were booing. Why is it okay to boo during the national anthem? Hold on. Anthem? I'll, I'll answer your question. I'll just, it's very simple. If they're booing the players for disrespecting the flag to shame them, then they're completely right because they're defending the flag. That's they were the still point. Booing during the national anthem. And that's I know they were trying to shame. They were trying to shame the players. Now, and as to your point, let's get look. Look, forget that, Josh. Trying. Josh, I'm not interested. I don't live in a moonbat world. I don't. So I want to address your question head on. Do the players have other reasons to protest? And it's not disrespectful to the flag. Let's get to that issue, okay? If you have a problem with policing in this country. If you're a supporter of Black Lives Matter, if you, whatever, hate cops, you think blacks have been given the short end of the stick, whatever your social justice cause is, you're a multi-gazillionaire. You can take a full-page ad out in the Boston Globe, in the New York Times, in the Wall Street Journal. You can have write people, you can pay people to write columns. You can go on Facebook, you can go on Twitter, you can put money back into the community. You can do a million and other things. But let me tell you what you don't do. Number one, you act like a professional because you're being paid to play football. You're not being paid to be a politician. That's point number one. I, if I kneel during the show, I'm out of a job. So is every other American. So they should be held to the same standards we all are. Number two, and more importantly, that flag represents your country. That flag represents all Americans. That flag represents our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, the military, the veterans, and everybody who's fought and died for that flag. So the one thing you don't do in any civilized society is disrespect your own flag, your own country, and your own anthem. You know what we call people like that? Savages, barbarians, ingrates, traitors. Do you understand that now? Hello? Hello? You see, when the moonbats can't rebut you, they just hang up. 
617-266-6868. Kathy in Quincy. Go ahead, Kathy. Hi, Jeff. Hi. God, Josh is in a, another universe, but I'm um, a long-time listener, first-time caller. Welcome, Kathy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what I want to find out with the, the topic of, of, of the boycotting of NFL games, how does that finally get down to the point where it hits uh, the, the pocketbooks of the owners and the businesses behind all of these games? I mean, I know you're saying that you have not watched it and won't. There's a lot of people are going to call in and say the same thing. And I trust your integrity when you say you haven't watched or won't. But I, I just wonder, how do they know that I'm not well, I'm not a football fan. I don't watch the games anyway. But how do they know I'm not watching if I was a fan? Okay. Kathy, a great question, and thank you for that call. There's basically two ways we can pro Well, three ways. Number one, and you're already seeing it. See, this is why if the NFL had half a brain, they would realize they got a potential crisis on their hands. The game on Thursday between the L.A. Rams and the San Francisco 49ers, the stadium was half empty. Half empty. Half. Half full. Uh, Los Angeles Chargers played yesterday. And I know it's L.A., it's not a big football town, but still, uh, half empty. So what you're starting to see now is that the stadiums are no longer filling up. So if you don't buy the tickets, they don't get the money. Number two, don't buy the gear. They make a lot of money through the jerseys and the gear. That's why a lot of people now are burning their jerseys or their gear in protest. In other words, I'm burning it and I'm never going to buy something again. Number three, if you don't watch it on TV... The bulk of the money for the NFL is even more than the tickets, the stadiums and stuff. It's the revenue from TV. So if the ratings go down, the ad money goes down, the sponsors get hurt. In other words, that will choke off the profit, the profitability, the money supply for the NFL. The ratings are now already in decline. This, I think, is now going to accelerate that decline significantly. And so literally, don't turn on the TV or watch something else. By the clicker, we can bankrupt the NFL. Or at least to the point where they're going to say, whoa, guys, you got to stand. And that was Trump's point, by the way, at that speech that he made in Alabama. He said, you know, you just walk out of the stadium. Just start walking out. Don't buy the tickets. Just don't watch them. And he goes, watch. They'll start standing up for that flag. 617-266-6868. Sandy in Salem. Go ahead, Sandy. Oh, Jeff, I'm so glad you touched on so many things today that I, I just... We ran home yesterday from the beach to watch this game and walked into the living room, turned on the TV, and there it was. How disgusting, how disgraceful. Don't they know what the N stands for in NFL? National. I mean, come on, guys. How about the poor? Sometimes it's a little kid up there, a 12-year-old or something, singing for the first time ever in front of this huge crowd. It's total disrespect. It's disgusting. They make too much money, and I'm so proud of that kid. Um, the, was he Pittsburgh? Uh, yes, yes. That, that player, yeah, Villanueva yeah. is how you pronounce his last Villanueva. name. Alejandro Villanueva, number 78. And Sandy, just so that you know, the country's responded as well. It's now the hottest selling NFL jersey right now. I'm going to buy one too, and I'm checking on my <laughs> Brady t shirts and gear. Oh, I. Thank you, thank you, Sandy. 617 266 6868. Uh, Lena in North Reading. Go ahead, Lena. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. Um, I wanted to make two quick points. Yes. I think what was bothering me more than anything yesterday was the fact that if these players really cared about this cause so much, why weren't they kneeling last week or the week before or last year? They weren't. This is just a knee-jerk tantrum, or as I like to call it, a mantrum. I mean, they are just you know, they, they don't like what they heard from Trump. And I know he shoots off sometimes, and I get that. But they are not invested in this cause. If you want to get my respect, go out. 
volunteer, donate your time, donate your money if you really believe in this cause. But this was nothing more than a PC show. Uh, you're completely right. Thank you for that call. This was part of the anti-Trump so-called resistance. And so let me tell you what happened. What happened was he made his comment. Roger Goodell got furious. He called up the Wall Street Journal, just laid out the whole thing. He called up the coaches. He called up the owners. He called up everybody in the league. And he said, we're going to teach this guy a lesson. We're going to have two, 300 players protest on Sunday, okay? You guys want to stay in the locker room even though it's against the rules? No problem. You do whatever you do, and we show this president he's not going to tell us what we can or can't do on the football field, even though it's completely disrespectful to our country, to the flag, and to the fans. It doesn't matter. So that's what, the, that's what Roger Goodell, in fact, he came out with a statement to Sports Illustrated, listen to this, saying he's never been more proud of the NFL than after the protests yesterday. He's never been more proud. I swear, that's what he said, that they handled it perfectly. So this is part of the anti-Trump so-called resistance movement. And so what you're seeing now is football players are starting to act like politicians. Liberal, democratic politicians. And that's Roger Goodell. He thinks now he's a democratic politician. So if you want to politicize football, that's your right. It's a private league. It's up to you. You want to politicize it. You want to inject politics. You want to ram your liberal values, your anti-American, anti-patriotic values down my throat. No problem. I'm turning the dial. You see, this is what I don't get from all these liberals. (gasps) How dare you say we should boycott the NFL? It's freedom of speech. And Well, freedom of speech cuts both ways. You have the right to be offensive, but I have the right to be offended. So how come these guys can take a can take a knee and they can spit on our flag and our anthem and our country and everybody who fought and died for it, but we can't walk out? We can't turn the dial? We can't say we've had it? No, 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 no. Freedom is a two-way street. So guys, you want to act like ESPN? You're going to get the ratings of ESPN. Richie in Weymouth. Go ahead, Richie. Hi. Jeff, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Well, when Kaepernick pulled this last year, I turned off the NFL, and I haven't turned it on since. And what we have to do on top of not turn the TV on to their station, find out who their advertisers are, and start flooding them with letters and calls and saying, we're not going to buy your products if you keep continue to uh, advertise with the NFL. And... I'll guarantee you, this will end. Richie, thank you for that call. Uh, Look, I mean, that's up to you if you want to boycott Anheuser-Busch or these other products. What I'm going to do, very simply, just so that you know where I'm coming from, I'm no longer going to buy any NFL jerseys or gear, even though Ashton really wants a Brady shirt. I'm not going to do it. And I'm not going to watch an NFL game. I love football. Uh, it's one of, I grew up with it with my father watching the NFL. It pains me to have to do this. I think it's a great American game. The liberals just screwed that one up as well. So until they learn, it's like the politicians in Washington. You ultimately work for us. We don't work for you. You work for us. We pay your tickets. We buy the gear. We buy the jerseys. We watch the product on TV. We're the ones that put money in your pockets. If you don't want to respect us for that, that's okay. Guys, I, honestly, Saturday football, college football is phenomenal. Good product. They play hard. They respect the flag. They respect the country that they're in. Uh, believe me, uh, you know, it's it's a good game. I don't need the NFL. Believe me. 617-266-6868. Okay. What Trump said, was it racist? Many NFL players and the liberal media say yes. Is it true? Okay, my friends. So the line of attack now being used by some players and by the liberal media is that what Trump said, saying basically urging owners to fire or suspend players who disrespect the anthem and disrespect the flag when they kneel, is that 
really it was racist. That he was targeting black players, black coaches, and Black Lives Matter. And the president defended himself. Roll it, Brittany. We have great people representing our country, especially our soldiers, our first responders, and they should be treated with respect. And when you get on your knee and you don't respect the American flag or the anthem, that's not being treated with respect. I've never said anything about race. This has nothing to do with race or anything else. This has to do with respect for our country and respect for our flag. Bingo. I mean, really, bingo. Again, you know, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, they all joined the protests. They're as much to blame as anybody else. So this is not a race thing. It's an American flag patriotism issue. And what they're doing is blatantly anti-American, it is anti-patriotic, and it is disrespectful of our flag and, frankly, of our country. 617-266-6868. Now, Colin Kaepernick's mother, I'm not kidding, came out and defended Colin Kaepernick. And so when Trump, you know, referred to... Uh, you know, the players as SOBs. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say, get that son of a bitch off the field? She said, well, just call me a B. Don't call me the son of a B, just call me a B. And so, I kid you not, so now you have players saying that not only did he insult them, but he also insulted their mothers by calling them SOBs. And I'm like, boy, you guys, no, really. You know, these are the same players who can't construct or write or express a simple sentence. They're dumb as a doorknob. And I'm like, you know, guys, you really, I don't know if it's the brain damage, the concussions, whatever it is. But, you know, when he said SOB, he didn't literally mean SOB. It's an expression. Now, as for Kaepernick's mom, he was actually referring to NFL players, of which your son... I hate to say it, is not one of. Bill in Hyde Park. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? I'm good. How are you, Bill? Uh, Jeff, first of all, first of all, it's not crap, but that it's Kaepernick, okay? Oh, oh, is it? You don't want nobody miss... miss, miss oh, miss I'm sorry, involved. Bill. I thought it was oh, Colin. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it yeah, Colin you, Kaepernick? You, you know, you've got a way of, of, of sling, putting those things in that is insulting, Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Bill. Oh yeah, you be sorry. Uh, how many, Jeff? How many times have you decided and wanted to uh, 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 boycott the NFL? Well, it's been as, ever since Black Lives Matter and Colin Kaepernick okay. infiltrated well, well, the league. Just, you know something, Jeff? Why, why does it have to be Black Lives Matter? Why, why can't you say it like All Lives Matter? Well, they're okay. the ones that call it you Black gotta, Lives gotta, Matter. Uh, listen, your wife, Grace, okay, came on in defense of you. Either either she's married to somebody else or she doesn't just she just doesn't know you. Because you mean my own wife doesn't on, know me, Bill. What? My own wife doesn't know me. You no, know, she doesn't know you for her and I she was very eloquent. And I wanted to tell a touche on the way she came on. She was very graceful. Okay? Oh, thank. Well, see, see, I married up, Bill. She's, uh, she's an intelligent, smart lady. The only thing I've ever felt bad about her is when she told and made a statement that Obama was not a good family man. Okay? Well, he was a loser, Bill. Just so that you know, he was a loser. Okay, my friends, coming up next, a lot more. Don't touch that dial.